Welcome back to the shop, friends. Shop. Can I call it a shop? We've got tools, small toolbox, and workbench. We do shop stuff. I guess we can call it a shop, huh? All right, yeah. So, welcome back to the shop. Well, so in a previous video, we did a full line on my Jeep, and I kind of went through the process and showed you what I do and kind of how to do it, what to look for, and all that stuff. But there's a few areas that fell short, and one of them was adjusting the tow in or out uh, on your on your front on your front axle. Mainly that well, the method may not be very repeatable or be very good. So I sat down. I had a thought about it. I really thought. I really thunk. I really did about this, and I think I came up with a method that's repeatable, cheap, and uh, pretty easy to use. It just requires a little bit of setup. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Before we do it though, let's take a look at what we need and then we'll try it out and see if it works. Uh, I'm pretty confident it will, but we're just kind of seeing if we can come up with a different method to do front alignments that's a little easier and not so expensive as far as tools go. So let's take a look. And here we are. This is what you need, let me explain. So I picked up this angle, uh, this is two inch. This is actually what they call slotted angles. I kid you not, it says slotted angles there on the tag, but it's just, fancy for angle iron with holes. Uh, I think regular angle iron or aluminum would work just fine. I chose the slotted stuff because I figured it would be easier to strap up. Uh, you're gonna need two ratchet straps or bungee cords. I don't know which one's gonna work better and we're gonna test that out. Uh, we're gonna need two cheap tape measures and then an angle finder I think we're gonna need as well. I'm not sure about this one, but this is the one we used in the last video. I like it a lot, I'll link to it. Um, it is really nice. Also, I recently accidentally ran it over. You can see some of the stress markings on there and it still works fine. So it must be pretty durable. Uh, yeah, because my Jeep ran it over. All right, so with that, let's go ahead. Let's get these tied up and see if this is gonna work. Okay, so here is my thought is that we'll try the bungee cord first because I think it's gonna be the easiest thing. So let's go from there. Just, I'm hooking it wherever I can to somewhere back here. Oh, I see. Oh, the caliper bolt should do. So right now it's hooked to a uh, sway bar, the link that comes down and caliper bolt. So I'm thinking what we can do is we can just kind of slip this in here. Maybe. So, that looks like that'll hold it. And then if we get it to a certain height, I'm gonna go low, because I was sitting here thinking about it, and if I put this too high, I can't measure on the back side because the control arms and all the other stuff that's under there. So, let's just measure this up and put it at about six inches because that's an easy number to remember. This method might need a little fine tuning, but okay, we got her. So I already went ahead and did the other side. Now we'll just run our tape measures across. All right, went ahead and did the other side. So they're both the same height. Now we just grab our tape measures and hook them on. Just like that. One on the front and one on the rear. Let's try that again. There we go. Make sure that tape is straight. Yeah, that works out real well. Yeah, I think this is gonna work out well. So now we can see our measurements front to rear without having to remember anything. So we're at 69 and a quarter in the front and 69 and a half in the rear. So actually we have, we are towed in toward the front a little too much. So actually we need to back that out 
and get it as even as possible. And the beauty of this method is, like I said, you can see both at the same time. All right, let's see where that landed us. So the front is 69 and three, it's exactly. And the rear is a touch over 69 and three, it's, so we need to pull it in just a smidge. I wonder if I can do it from right here. Okay, so after that adjustment, this one is a little under 3 8 and the back is a little over 3 8 and luckily, this is about an, H, an eighth inch thick. So, we are an eighth inch towed in, which is actually uh, basically where we're supposed to be at. Okay, that's all tight. Well, that was pretty easy. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. That worked very, very well. And it was way easier to set up than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was gonna be like really fiddly. I was gonna to have to really mess with it. But uh, no, five minutes or so, and it was all set up and ready to be used. So I like that. It was quick, easy, and cheap. It's like the trifecta of auto parts or auto repair, which you almost never find. Maybe I should go buy a lottery ticket. Now, who needs those? <laughs> you don't need a lot of tickets here. So with that, um, yeah, honestly, I don't know. I, that's, it's really shocking, actually. I, I like it. It works way better than any of my other methods. Way better than scribing lines on tires. Way better than trying to find that magic point on the tires that's the same on the front and the rear and getting the measurements the same. And it's easy because you don't have to remember anything. It's all displayed there right in front of you so you can see it all at the same time. And uh, yeah, I like easy and I like cheap and I like quick, that was all three, which is insane to me. So, uh, a few points before I let you go. Uh, one, bungee cords worked really, really well. Don't need the ratchet straps. I thought I was going to only because I didn't think the bungee cords were gonna be tight enough, but they were, so they worked really well. Two, you don't need the angle finder. I thought you were going to, to keep everything like level and square, but if you measure from the ground up, obviously you don't need the angle finder because they'll all be pretty level and square. Uh, but if you're gonna measure your pinion angle, you do need that angle finder, so I'll link to it before, below, because it is nice, it's pretty affordable, and it must be durable because I read it over and it still works, so there's that. So, with that, I think it's time to end the video. Hit the comments below if you have any questions or, or concerns or comments. Um, let me know what methods you use to line your vehicle or what tools. On that note, I will link to a more commercial unit that you can just buy that works a very similar way. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but you don't have to go with like the setup process and you don't have to try to find the stuff. Uh, it's just easier to have. I'm gonna use this because I like it and I have it, but if you don't wanna mess with this, then um, there's that out there for you as well. So with that, I think it's time to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone who does. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.